Amid the buzz surrounding the upcoming Starship Flight 4 launch, another major development has captured everyone's attention. SpaceX has just released an update on the cause of the explosion that occurred during the third Starship launch, affecting both the Super Heavy booster and Starship itself. So, what went wrong with the vehicle in that critical third launch? How did SpaceX address the issue, and what solutions are they implementing for future flights? Let's dive into these questions and more in today's episode of SpaceX Flight. On May 24th, along with announcing the official launch date for Starship Flight 4, SpaceX released a detailed update on the issues encountered during the third flight. This timely update addresses the mysteries we've been pondering for the past two months. During the third flight, when the second stage of the rocket reached space, the vehicle was lost during its return journey. It began to lose attitude control while maneuvering in space, leading to an off-nominal re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The most likely root cause of the unplanned roll during the third flight was identified to be clogging in the valves, responsible for roll control. In response, SpaceX has added extra roll control thrusters on upcoming starships to enhance attitude control redundancy. They have also upgraded the hardware for better resilience to blockages. This improvement seems to be why SpaceX didn't attempt to restart the Raptor engines during the upper stage flight as the new roll control thrusters hadn't been implemented yet. Now moving on to the super heavy booster which attempted a soft water landing into the sea, which upon separating from Starship's upper stage, 13 out of the 33 Raptor engines on super heavy successfully reignited to navigate to the lower atmosphere. However, during the boost back burn, six of these engines shut down prematurely. As the rocket approached the sea, it was supposed to use the same 13 engines for the final landing burn. Due to the early shutdown, these six engines were disabled for the landing burn, leaving seven engines to start the sequence. Of those, only two reached main stage ignition. According to SpaceX's flight recap, the booster had lower than expected thrust during the landing burn, resulting in contact loss at approximately 462 meters in altitude over the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX revealed that the root cause of the issue was clogging in the liquid oxygen supply to the engines which led to a loss of input pressure in the engine's oxygen pump turbines, which is similar to issues experienced during IFT-2, where the booster failed to initiate the boost backburn. To address this, SpaceX made hardware changes before Flight 3, allowing the booster to attempt its first landing burn. For Flight 4 and beyond, the Super Heavy booster will feature additional hardware inside the oxygen tank to enhance propellant filtering, utilizing data collected from Super Heavy's initial landing burn attempt. In their updated timeline for the fourth flight, SpaceX plans to jettison the hot stage ring at 3 minutes and 54 seconds. This process reduces the booster's weight, optimizing the vehicle's tolerance and ensuring it has enough propellant to decelerate and land properly. This solution is part of SpaceX's iterative process, which will be done temporarily to better understand the landing dynamics. Once they have gathered sufficient data, the hot stage ring won't be discarded as this practice doesn't align with their long-term goals for full reusability and rapid turnaround. After all is said and done before launch, one crucial aspect is securing a launch license, which depends on receiving approval from the FAA. But although the SpaceX-led mishap investigation following Flight 3 is still ongoing, the company is aiming to leverage a pre-existing clearance mechanism within the FAA's rules to resume flights before the investigation is fully concluded. During Flight 3, neither vehicle's automated flight safety system was triggered, and no debris impacted areas outside the predefined hazard zones. SpaceX stated that, pending the FAA's determination of no public safety impact, a license modification for the next flight could be issued without the formal closure of the mishap investigation. Frequent and consistent launches are vital for SpaceX's development process and NASA's missions. The rockets are contracted to support a crewed lunar landing during the Artemis 3 mission, which is now scheduled for September 2026, nearly a year later than the previous target date of December 2025, as announced by NASA earlier this year, and it will be thrilling to see what milestones will SpaceX accomplish next. That's all for today's episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment box below. We value your input and it helps us create better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.